City life suited Dan Breen, and a wide network of friends and relatives were happy to help. Dan Breen embraced every opportunity his reputation presented him. He would often go drinking at Tipperary man Phil Shanahan's public house in Dublin's red light district, The Monto. Is that one you were telling me earlier on? Was you walk around Dublin, no one knows who it is. And what happened? Oh, you love. He developed a taste for fast living and urban living and being in the limelight. They became big celebrities. Breen was someone that well bred uh, Republican young women found very attractive. The hue and cry of the authorities referred to him almost as an almost stereotypical countryman. Uh, has the appearance like a blacksmith coming home from work. As part of the counter espionage unit of Collins, Breen proved, first of all, I suppose, what was not surprising, that he was ruthless, absolutely ruthless in what had to be done. But secondly, he proved that he was quite effective in an urban environment. By the time Breen had got back to Tipperary, the war had descended into a brutal game of reprisal and counter reprisal. Breen's flying column captured RIC inspector Gilbert Potter and held him hostage. They offered Potter in exchange for the IRA's Tom Trainer, who was facing execution in Mountjoy. The offer was rejected. Inspector Potter's fate was sealed. Breen had got to know Potter very well in captivity. Please, give these to my wife. Dan became very friendly with him over the fortnight or so that he was held. And it was the worst thing he ever had to do was to have this man executed. 